If you wanted to compartmentalize how religion is encoded in the brain, what we learn from diseases is that damage to the frontal lobes of the brain, these areas here, can disrupt our religious behavior, our religious observance, and our religious ideas. So to what extent we go to places of worship, to what extent we sign up to this or that creed can be altered by damage in those areas. Whereas the experience of God, that oceanic feeling of the ineffable that people have when they encounter the God in some way, that is mediated through the temporal lobes, which are further down here. And we know that because diseases in that area induce these feelings. So I think we can begin to get a, a structure around how religion is mediated through the brain. In dementia of various types, parts of the brain degenerate, leaving other parts of the brain healthy. And in the particular form of dementia affecting the frontal lobes, where one frontal lobe may degenerate, leaving the other one healthy, occasionally, rather rarely, we see people suddenly develop new talents. So in the context of disease, something is released. And most characteristically, this is around creativity. So someone who is not particularly artistically gifted throughout their life will suddenly develop a passion and a gift for art for a few months or a few years and then the dementia catches up with them and that frontal lobe degenerates further and this is lost. It's as though one frontal lobe, perhaps the left frontal lobe, suppresses the creative talent of the right frontal lobe throughout life and it's when that left frontal lobe degenerates that the other is allowed to uh, release its creativity. Now interestingly, if you look carefully at the case histories of people who have this, alongside creativity can sometimes appear a flowering of religiosity, of an increased interest in faith matters, an increased attendance at places of worship, as though that religious module had been suppressed during life and was now allowed to flourish and to flower. And that presents us with the hypothesis which needs to be addressed that we all have within us an inherent religiosity that may be being suppressed by our brains, by conflict within the brain. All this demonstrates is that the brain, the human brain, has been built or has evolved with the capacity to experience God and understand the religious impulse. And that can be influenced in health and in disease. It tells us nothing about whether God actually exists or doesn't exist. And it tells us nothing about the important questions of whether God cares for us, whether God intervenes in our lives and so on. So all we learn is that the brain has a mechanism which allows us to experience God and allows us to behave in a religious way.